Today we're going to talk about lore, how it affects music, and how it interacts with parasocial relationships. Now for those of you that don't know, lore by definition is a body of traditions and knowledge on a subject or held by a particular group, typically passed from person to person by word of mouth. However, it has received a bit of a transformative definition recently, at least in the music world and online, where knowing the lore behind a song or album is essentially just knowing the backstory or inspiration for the music. So in this video, that definition of lore will be applied. Lore has always been popular and in many ways goes hand in hand with popular music. Let's take it back to 1972 with Carly Simon's You're So Vain, a great song. Yet its endurance is largely in part due to the lore surrounding the song. You're So Vain, if you couldn't guess by the title, is a song about a man who is full of himself. Before the song became a hit single in 1972, Simon told an interviewer that the song was about men, not a specific man, and it has been a great point of interest for decades on who the song is actually about. She did confirm that at least one of the verses was about actor Warren Beatty. However, she decided to keep the mystery of the song going, and in 2015 said, I have confirmed that the second verse is about Warren, and added that Warren thinks the whole thing is about him. Simon added to the mystery by including, now that doesn't mean that the other two verses aren't also about Warren, she told the BBC. It just means that the second one is. This is like prototype Taylor Swift. Carly Simon did it first. But I think You're So Vain goes to show that outside of a song just being a classic or good song, lore can enrich a conversation about a song. Another example would be Michael Jackson's 1982 classic, Billie Jean. Obviously with Michael Jackson being the most famous person in the world, delivering an impassioned performance about how he's not the father of a kid would lead to speculation. Although Michael had stalker fans coming out proclaiming to be the real life Billie Jean after the song became a smash hit, in actuality it's just a song about the groupies he and his brother encountered during the Jackson 5 days. A more fun example of music lore is Sarah Bareilles' love song, which many people might assume is about a breakup in a romantic relationship. In reality, it's a clever diss to her label, who told her she needed a love song to be successful. Lore has become increasingly more prominent with relatability marketing sweeping the pop world. Take Olivia Rodrigo's driver's license that was catapulted to great success and largely driven by a love triangle bombshell between fellow co-stars Joshua Bassett and Sabrina Carpenter. And of course we have someone like Taylor Swift, who's always been pretty straightforward with her music but also meticulously plants easter eggs to engage fans. She has become increasingly more self-referential, and she often builds entire universes out of her experiences, allowing fans to immerse themselves in the Taylor Swift experience and picking up easter eggs along the way, much like Marvel Studios, thus the Marvel of pop music. However, I do think there is a line crossed when lore becomes an egg. Many fans of celebrities who are immersed in an artist's lore are like an army of emotional attack dogs. They believe that if you don't know the lore, you don't understand it or won't like the music. But that to me is where the problem lies. A good song is a good song, regardless if you know the backstory of the song or not. I don't need to know that After Hours by The Weeknd was allegedly inspired by Bella Hadid to know that I enjoy Blinding Lights and the album itself, and I don't enjoy it any more or any less before I knew the inspiration for the song. And I don't need to know who Lunch by Billie Eilish is about to enjoy the song because music is open interpretation and we attach our own experiences to the songs or just want fun. But a song being good is more in line with the production, the writing, the melody, the vocals. Of course there are moments where knowing the backstory of a song can make you feel closer to a song because the artist might have gone through the same things you've gone through. But it's the exception, not the rule. I think of someone like Adele who's very personal in her music but generally in a more wide appealing way. We don't know every single detail that went on in her relationships from her music, but we do understand and feel her emotion through her music. I think a more aggressive example in a similar vein would be Amy Winehouse in the Back to Black album, which holds no punches back. It is soul-bearing, honest, and detailed around Amy's direct experiences rather than just her emotions. She doesn't allude to what might have happened, she tells you straight up. Not everyone can relate to the subject matter of rehab and her constant battle with addiction but most people would agree that it is a good song. There's also times when knowing the backstory of a song can negatively impact your experience. For example, Aaliyah's first album, Age Ain't Nothing But A Number. Now granted, I do think it has some classics, and some of her best songs, Back and Forth, and her Isley Brothers cover, At Your Best, You Are Love. 
But knowing the backstory between her and R. Kelly, and his abuse and inappropriate relationship with her, makes it a very unsettling listen at times. Especially with the more risque songs knowing that they were written and produced by R. Kelly. Even the title track, Age Ain't Nothing But A Number. It's like, what he was doing was in plain sight. Personally, I rarely revisit Aaliyah's first album, not only because of the R. Kelly stuff, but because her following albums, One In A Million and Self-Titled Album, are miles better. They're more influential, and they are really the albums that established Aaliyah's signature sound. Now obviously, people can listen to whatever they want to. You can separate the artist from the art. When you like a song, you like a song. It doesn't inherently mean that you support everything this person has done. And music in general is a very personalized experience that can have memories and nostalgia attached to it. Listening to a person who has done terrible things is a personal choice. Some artists definitely make it harder though to separate the art from the artist, and I find that particularly true for R. Kelly. Anyways, these very lore-driven songs and careers have often aided to pair social relationships, and fans feeling as if they belong in an exclusive community. I find that there's a lot of condescending comments that come with not being as invested in an artist's personal life as a huge stan would be. For example, if someone gives their opinion on an album or song publicly, fans might say, you just don't get it. If you knew the backstory, you'd understand it so much more. It's hard to comprehend if you don't know the backstory, but in reality, it's not hard to comprehend. It's pretty straightforward pop music with some more engaging lyrical content, but it doesn't make the song any better or any worse. It's also just viewing music through a very analytical and parasocial lens, but that's simply not the appeal of music for everyone. And it often feels insulting when the rebuttal for not liking a song or album is met with what is basically saying, you're too dumb to get it. Here's how I feel about the interactivity of lore and music. Lore can enhance the experience, but it is not the experience.